Yo guys, welcome to this first episode of In The Studio with Fabian Masur. Now, today I'm going to be giving you guys some tips and taking you through my track called Sun Goes Down. Now the track was released last month on Lowly Palace and has already streamed more than 5 million times. Now first of all, I want to give you guys an overview of my Logic project. I didn't do the mixing in this project, I bounced everything out and then I mixed it. So, I'm going to save the whole mix and master thing for another episode. Now let me show you guys the project. Alrighty guys, welcome to my Logic project here. Now first of all, I just want to say I'm sorry because I couldn't get the Soundflower thing to work. So the audio quality is not going to be that great. Because I'm recording through my mic here in the studio and I couldn't get the sound out of Logic. So I'm sorry for that. But... Just to give you guys an overview, I've grouped everything in synth, drums, effects, bass, brass, and vocals. And I have a lot of tracks if you put everything out here. Now, as you can probably tell, this is pretty hard on the CPU of my computer. Um, this is 108 tracks, and I actually just cleaned it up it was like 120 before so obviously a lot of tracks are like small fills and stuff um and if you were to be cpu efficient you would group everything together here and bounce it out so you have less tracks but to be honest i'm just not that clever i think <laughs> all right so this is the overview of the track now for this video, I want to focus on the main things in Sun Goes Down. So I'll be taking you guys through the drop synth, the bass, the drums, and the vocals. Now I want to start off by taking you guys through the drop synth. Uh, because they're basically what makes the track. Alright, let's hop into it. Now this is my main drop lead here. And it sounds like this. So, first of all, you probably noticed that I made it in Serum. And this is my favorite plugin by far. I use it for 90% of all since I do. Um, and this preset is called Chord Futar, or Future or something. <laughs> and I actually almost didn't do anything to the sound. So it's all, I, I think I... And I almost didn't do anything to the preset, really. It's basically just how it sounds. Now, first of all, let me show you guys the chord progression here. It's really simple. Yep. And let's go for the channel strip over here. So usually I have around 8 to 12 plugins on my channel strip for my synths and I know it's a lot but I kind of like to over process a bit <laughs> even though it's a pretty bad thing alright so at first we have the EQ and I use Logic's channel EQ which is great because I like having visual EQs um, so I basically low cut everything at 100 Hertz except my kick and my sub bass and that's a rule of thumb that you should really, really go for in all your productions. Now, I took a little bit off between 2 kHz and 5 kHz here, um, but nothing major. And then, you probably noticed that I lowered it 10 dB in the, in the mid-range here, in the low mid-range. Um, and that's because I want to save that space for something else. Um, because when you hear the synth here... The thing, the thing is that between 100 and 500 hertz, um, the synth doesn't really sound that good. And I want to replace it with a different sound. So I lower it like 10 dB. And then I have room here for a different sound. Now, 
Next plugin is Logic Space Designer. And I used a preset called Perk Room, which is like a short plate reverb. Um, and I almost didn't have anything on it. It's just to give it a little bit of edge. Now the next plugin is from UAD. Um, it's called Precision K Stereo. And it's basically uh, it basically adds stereo width to your sound. Um, if you're in Logic, you can go for stock plugins like Direction Mixer or Stereo Spread. And they basically do the exact same thing. Now, the key plugin to achieving this pumpy sound is the One Knob Pumper from Waves. I love this plugin and I use it on all my leads. Um, it could really create a bounce. And what this does is you choose a rate and how much you want to sidechain. And then it sidechains to a ghost kick in the rate you selected. So I have mine set to a quarter here. So you can hear the pumper. So 10 would be like extreme sidechain and 0 would be nothing. Um, and I like to keep it in between on these sounds just to get a really big bounce. Um, I have the one up brightener, which just, it's kind of, it kind of acts like an exciter. So it, ad it adds a little bit of high frequencies, uh, crisp to it. Then I have the compressor from Logic. And I have it sidechained to my kicks track. Um... And the setting here is pretty basic. I use the Platinum Digital. Um, and I, I sidechained it pretty hard with a threshold of uh, 19 dB and the ratio here. So I sidechained it pretty hard to the kick. And that's because I knew from the start when creating this track that I wanted to have a big kick. I wanted to make a track that sounded really huge. Um, then I have the Dimension Expander on it. And a Limiter. Now, if you hear this lead on your own, it doesn't really sound like much. So, I have another lead here on top. And with this lead, it kind of adds a little bit of high top to it. So on the EQ over here, I took the mid-range out again because I don't like the mid-range of that sound. It didn't really have much uh, character. And I boosted the high frequencies. So if you hear them together, they sound like this. And for this second lead, I added overtones here. So you have more notes in the, in the piano roll. Um, which basically makes everything sound bigger. And for the mid-range, I have two saw basses. Now, the first bass here is from Serum, and it sounds like this. So it's made from the same preset as the one above here. I didn't really do anything to it, except I have the same pumper preset on all of my leads here. So together, they sound like this. Now, this saw bass adds a bit of the mid-range that was missing before. You see, primarily acts down here between 100 and 500 hertz. And added another saw bass just to make it sound bigger. Now, this one, I high cut it here, as you can tell. Um, because I wanted to really, I really wanted to have the area here stand out. And I also distorted it. And I used Logic's Distortion 2 um, with my own preset, actually. But it's really, you can use any distortion plugin to create this effect. Um, it's just a slight distortion, which you can also do saturation if you want. But what it does is it makes you able to hear it on like laptop speakers and your iPhone, for example. Um, so it brings out the, the mid-range here. All right, let me just try to play the two basses here together. 
So you notice how the first one is like a high mid range and the second one is a low mid range. The important thing here with these leads are that you have layers in different spectrum of the frequencies. Um, so you have the first drop lead, which is overall and plays a lot of like high mids and stuff. Then you have the second one, which plays all the high frequencies. And you have the basis, which covers the mid range. So to, all together, they sound like this. Now the good tip for layers here. I sidechained everything to the kick. So every time the kick punches in, every lead drops a few dBs. Um, other than that, I wanted it to have like a 4-4 four, four feel drive. I wanted it to have a lot of energy. So I used the same one knob pumper on every one. And I turned it to 6 on every one of these four leads here. It makes it more energetic actually. Um, I also automated the LFOs here. I know it looks like chaos, um, but you can see what it does here. So it's just really slight changes in how the synth acts with the filter in Serum. And I kind of like to do that with all the leads so they all drop at the same time um and to be honest it's not something you hear that much in the track but as a producer i think i went a bit overboard with the fx thing here because this took me a lot of time to do now on the second drop you'll notice that i have another layer and this is just to create a bigger feel which is overtones So this is like a really high pitch lead from Spire. Um, and I don't really use Spire that much anymore, but I used to use it a lot. Um, and what I have over here is just basic stereo. Um, yeah, this one, basic stereo. Um, a little bit of reverb. Then I have the same pumper, compression and limiter. Um, and you can hear it in context here. So here's without the overtones. Now I add these. So it just adds a bit more to the high end of the track. Um, and I created these tones because I wanted them to play something different than the other leads um, to make it sound bigger. Now, just to conclude this synth part here, when I make future bass, I really focus on layers. Um, having different synth elements that fit together well can really make a track way more energetic. Um, not saying that you can't create a future bass track with just one lead, because you can, and it, it can work, but I like to layer mine up a lot. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is bass. Now, when you make a future bass track, personally, I think there's two ways you could go. You can either go with an 808, which is going to play long notes, like bum, 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 bum. Or you can have a sub bass playing the same melody as your drop lead. Um, and I usually try both things out to see what works best. And in this case, the sub bass worked way better. Alright y'all, welcome back in the project. Now, I want to talk about the bass here. Now first of all, as I just said, I tried out that 808 first, but it didn't really have enough energy. Um, and since I wanted the synths to really drive the track, I made a really subtle bass. Um, and first of all, just to see the notes here, it plays the exact same thing as the mid basses up here. Sounds like this. So what it is, is really just a simple 
sub bass. You can make it at any plugin. Now I made it in uh I made it in Native Instruments Core Player, which is I think it's discontinued actually. They don't even make it anymore. What it is is really just a simple sinus wave sub bass. Um, you could make it in Serum in like two minutes. Um, just let's just go here, Serum, and you could just like make it in Serum like this. It's almost the same thing. So, on the channel strip, I start with the pumper. And I had to turn it down a little bit more because I also wanted the sub bass to drive the track. So if I turn it all the way up to 6 like the other elements, it would be a little bit too side-chained in the low end. So I had to turn it down here between 2 and 3 just to get a slight feel of the side-chain. So it melts better with the other synths. Um, then I have a, a compressor which is side-chained to, to my kick here. And a slightly less side chain than the other elements because i also want the sub bass to slap so when you play it out live it still has that low end impact then i have a transient master on it which is a plugin from native instruments that is really good um basically what a transient master does is that you can change the transients of your sound any way you want so you can you can change the attack and the sustain of a sound. And I use it on synths and I use it on drums a lot. Here I used it on the bass to give it a little bit less attack and more sustain. And I actually didn't EQ my bass at all because it sounds pretty good coming out of core players to be honest. Um, and in the mix project, I added a little bit more low end to it. Um, but I didn't really do that much, to be honest. Now, what this does is, you can see here on the EQ. It almost only operates here in the really low end frequencies. And that's exactly what I want, because I already have my two mid bases playing between 100 and 500. So what I want, actually, I could do this and just high cut it um, down to 100 hertz. But there's not really not much going on here anyway. So I just left it the way it is. Now, just to conclude this bass part here, is when you make future bass, I kind of like having a sub bass to play the low end. And I like to have mid basses. Like you're hearing a lot of the slushy stuff, um, the marshmallow stuff. You have like these really, really overpowering um, mid basses, like saw basses and stuff. Um, and that's what I like to do as well, just a little bit more subtle, like I did in this track. So you have the sub bass, and you'll have your mid basses. So it sounds like this. And if this were to be a slushy or marshmallow track, it would probably sound like this. <laughs> you get the point. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is drums. And there's really a lot of ways to do drums when you do future bass tracks. Um, and for this one, I wanted to create a track which had a lot of impact live. Let me show you how I made the drums. Now, first of all, you probably notice that I have a lot of drum tracks over here. Um, and that's because I have a lot of like filler stuff, like small fills and all that stuff. Small loops, small sounds. Um, but let me take you guys through the main drums of the track. Um, Let me just solo the drum here. So in the intro, I have this hi-hat loop, which sounds like this.
really simple loop. And I just added a bit of tape delay, sample delay to make it wider. And then I added a phaser um, with this modulation of the hi-hat I really like. And then I distorted it a bit and added space designer. So, so I also panned it out here. So it switches from side to side. And I know there's a plugin in Logic um, which does exactly that. But I kind of like to do it manual to have full control over it. So you can hear it switching from left to right. Or maybe you can't because the audio quality is so shitty here. Sorry. <laughs> So I basically have this loop going for the entire break. And then later on I have a few clap samples and build up drums coming in. And for drum samples I usually go for either Cashmere, Cymatics, Retro Hands or my own samples. Um... So I have this marching band sounding loop here on the break, which is from the Cymatics Future Bass Pack. You can see it here. And I ch just chopped it up a bit. And I added a few plugins here. A little bit of Manny's Distortion. Um, and then I have the Supercharger from Native Instruments. Just to give it a little bit more compression. Um, and just to beef it up a bit. You can also go for like plugins like Sausage Fattener or something to give this effect. And on top of that loop, I added a lot of claps and snares. And on the build up here, I have this build up kick loop because I was really lazy and didn't want to do it myself. <laughs> so it's basically just a kick loop on the build up which I filled it up with Logic EQ. So, the drums on the drop, they sound like this. Alright, so let me go through each element here. First, we have kick one. Now, you probably notice that this kick is really stereo um, and already sounds layered, and that's because it is. <laughs> it's from my first sample pack I did for Sennheiser, and it's called. 004 kick stereo kick um, and it's already processed so I just dumped it in there straight and didn't EQ or do anything to it that's a good thing about having your own samples now kick number two sounds like this so it's basically a stump which I low cut it 108 Hertz So together, they sound like this. So the stump adds a little bit of mid and high frequencies to it. Um, and basically, I use the stump here to make it sound bigger. Because the other one sounds really good. And has a lot of low end punch. But I wanted it to sound a little bit bigger in the mid and high range. Now, for the snares. I always layer my snares a lot um, because I have yet to find a snare that sounds full on its own so my first snare here is from the jupe sample pack and it sounds really good
and you can tell that it kind of peaks here between one kilohertz and two kilohertz um so i filled it out with this one and this is your classic cymatic snare um so it has a lot of impact in the low end as you can tell here or the mid-range so together they sound like this so you have one in the low mid-range and you have one in the high range it's kind of the same principle as the sense here where you layer stuff in different frequencies to make it sound full now the third one is probably my favorite snare ever it's from the crane sample pack and it's called wolf snare now this is like a clap layered with a snare layered with a triangle um and it's basically it's basically it's just so good and it sounds really good with the other th snares here Now, three, three snares wasn't enough for me, so I added a fourth one, which is a tonal snare. Now, this one is from my sample pack number two on Sennheiser. So, together, they sound like this. I also have a lot of additional things here, um, like you have chance on the kicks that goes like this. Um, but to conclude the drum part here, um, I generally always layer my drums because I, I have a hard time finding samples that can fill out your track. Alright y'all, now for the last part of this production video. I want to talk about vocals. Now, I do all my vocals myself. I record them right here, and then I process the fuck out of them. Um, so first of all, I just want to state, whatever you sound like, you can make your vocals sound good with processing in the computer software. Um, so it's a funny thing about this track, um, because at first I created like an entire verse of the vocals. And then later on, I felt like the vocals were a bit too much in focus. Um, so I just cut out bits of the vocals and I did the, I took the phrases out of the vocals and just used we off you put the hands up when the sun goes down. Um, and that worked way better. So let me show you guys what I did with the vocals. Now, actually, I opened up a different project to show you guys the vocals. And that's because I had to bounce everything out because the vocal tracks were taking up so much CPU. So just for fun, let me play you guys the first draft of what the vocals sounded like. This is the first verse which I initially recorded and didn't use. Whenever the life is away, people get united in the sky. We're sharing all this energy when the sun goes down. All of the people of people dance up when the sun goes down. We are people to hands up when the sun goes down. When the sun goes down. So actually, I bounced this one out and I worked with it in another project um, and chopped it up. But let me just show you what I use for my recording channel strip here. Uh, let's see here. So let me just turn everything off so I can play it for you without. Just to prove that I really can't sing. Whenever the life is away. People get united in the sky. Alright, you get the feeling, right? This is terrible. But, you can save your vocals really easy. Um, first, let me go through the whole channel strip of the vocal here. Now, this is how I usually process my vocals. First, I have a vocal writer. 
This is a plugin from Waves. And what it does is it basically keeps the volume of your vocal within this range. So you just set a range and then everything below will get boosted up. Now this is a good plugin to use if you vary in how loud you sing. Which I do because I have no training whatsoever. Then I used uh, the Waves DSer. And I actually DSed it pretty much because there was a lot of high end on, on the recording and S's. Um, then I compressed it a little bit. Just a really standard preset in the Logic compressor. You just go in here, click on voice, and then I use the type R vocals. Then I have Direction Mixer, which just spreads it out a little bit in the, like, it gets it a little bit of stereo width. And I have an EQ. And this is also a preset from Logic called Made Lead Vocal. And I just usually go for presets and then I tweak it a little bit to fit my own vocals. Now I have a noise gate. And that's because there was a lot of noise on the recording at points where I didn't say anything. So all the little points in between here, this one can take all that away. Now I have the Space Designer. In a pretty default preset, actually, just to add a little bit of reverb to it. And then I have my auto tune, which is Logic's pitch correction. And I set it to D flat. And I took the response all the way down because I can't sing for shit. So this is the pitch thing you're hearing. Then I have a delay on it, which is also a stock plugin from Logic. And I have the mix turned all the way down, so you don't hear it that much. And then I use Waves CLA Vocals plugin. And I love this. I use it on all my vocals. Now, this is great if you want to compress it more and add a little bit of top to it, which I did. Um, I usually use the preset called Start Me Up. And then I switch it from sub to lower because we don't want any sub here. And I keep the top all the way up. And Spank Compression is good. I turn the reverb off, the delay off, because I like to control that in different plugins. And then I have a bit of stereo on it. And I also add an EQ at the end. And that's because when I have that many plugins on my channel strips since the first EQ, a lot can go wrong here. I like to control everything. So I have an EQ, uh, of course a limiter, just to keep it from clipping. But I have an EQ as the last thing in my channel strip, just to control everything. And I added a bit of high to the EQ as well. Whenever the life is so weird, people get united in the sky. Alright, now let me take you guys to the other project where I have the correct vocal. We are people dancing when the sun goes down. We are people dancing when the sun goes down. I'm in another alternative project here, but these are the finished vocals. Now, I bounced them out from the other take. So all the plugins I showed you right before, they're actually on the bounces. So what I did here on the new channel strip is I added a little bit of, I added low cut just to be sure. Then I added a little bit of reverb, a little bit of echo. A little bit of money got in my life. And I added a little bit of high end just to boost it. And then the limiter. And I had a center bus with the waves plugin called ultra pitch and what this does is it basically creates multiple voices which means that instead of having one voice in the center you have six voices which are panned out different and in different formats which makes it sound wider and bigger these vocals have been through like 20 plugins so now they sound pretty good um but I wanted them to have a bit more crisp in the high end because right now you can't really understand what is being said. Um, so what I did was I bounced these vocals out. And I had another track here where I low cutted them all the way up to almost 4 kilohertz. So it's only the high end playing. Yeah. 
and then I compressed it really hard. Um, I used the vocal hard setting, and then I compressed it even harder, actually, which makes it a lot easier to hear what's being said in the track and brings the vocals out way more. Now, here's how the vocals sound so far. We are people down so when the sun goes down. So they sound good, but I wanted to add a little bit of edge to them. So what I did was I took these, pitched them an, an octave up, but I also used something called flex pitch in Logic, which can be used to change pitch and format of audio samples. And what I did was usually it says off here and I changed it to flex pitch. Then what it does is it analyzes your audio and then you're able to change the format and pitch. And I took the format down five. So it sounds like this. We are people down so when the sun goes down. And without the format shift, it would sound like this. We are people down so when the sun goes down which is way too smurfy, and that's why I, I turned it down. So formants are the articulation of the vocals being sung, which means if you turn the format down, it's going to sound like more throaty, if that makes any sense. Now, with the other ones, it sounds like this. We are people down so when the sun goes down. We are people down so when the sun goes down. Just to finish up these vocals on the verse, um, usually I have a lot of vocal tracks, but since I bounced them out and went to a different project, I don't. Um, but a tip for vocals is in general is have your lead be in dead center. And then you have all your dubs and your ad-libs and voices straight left or right. Like hard pan straight left or right. Um, and the reason why everything is in center here is because I bounced out the vocals while they were already panned. Alright, now let me go to the drop vocals here. I'm going to go into the new project. And just, uh, just for fun here. Look how many alternative I have. At first, I made this future break thing. And then I wanted to have a Sesco type drop. Then I figured I would mix it down, but I didn't. Then I made a 4x4 drop, which was terrible. I made a V2 of that. I wanted to make an 8 drums collab, which didn't happen. Then I made future bass. Then I made both drop future bass. I made new vocals. I mixed that down, and then I made the final version. <laughs> so I know it's pretty fucked up. And it's a fun process with these things. I mean, I worked on this track for almost a year. Alright, now we're back in the final project here. I want to show you guys how I made the drop vocals. So the drop vocals go like this. When the sun goes down. All right, so basically what I did was I took the vocals from the verse saying when the sun goes down um, and then here I have the original one. So it sounds like this. When the sun goes down. So that's just the last sentence of the verse vocals. And I wanted to add something on top of the future bass leads. Um, and I tr at first I tried browsing vocal one shots in the plugin called Exhale. Um, and I didn't really get to do anything good. So I figured I would try chopping up my own vocals. Um, what I did was, let me just turn everything off here. And you can hear how it sounds. When the show goes down. When the show goes down. So these are just chops. And first of all, I added an EQ. Which took a bit of the mid-range out and boosted the, the highs here. Now, overdrive. 
this is basically a distortion and what it does it, it it what it does is it crisps up the high top a bit more i used a preset called bright tube and actually this was a tip given to me by snuffs he uses that bright tube a lot and it's a really good preset for bringing out a little bit of saturation in the high top so i use wave sound shifter to pick pitching up an octave And then I added some reverb in Space Designer and the Pumper, just to give it a little bit of sidechain feeling. And just to leave space for the kick in the mix as well. Then I have a Transit Master, just to give it a bit more sustain. Then I added an EQ just to control everything and take a bit off the high top. And Compression, which is sidechain to the kick. So every time the kicks come in the vocals drop now here's how it sounds after the processing just a quick tip here if you're working in logic and you chop up vocals you should use the flex pitch tool I used it here and turned the formants down, which I just showed you on the verse. And what it does is you can double click an audio sample and it works exactly like Melodyne. So you can see all the words and what notes they're in. So. And then you can just change it like you want. So you can hear this. If you wanted it to be, say, an I don't know, a different, a different note progression, you could do that easily. So you just grab these here, change them down. And that is also what I did here, where it goes. So flex pitch in Logic is a really easy tool um, for editing pitch quick. You could also use like Melodyne or pitch plugins, but that's a little bit more difficult. So if you're working in Logic, I really recommend you going for the flex pitch tool. Now that's going to conclude it for the vocal thing. All right, y'all, that's going to conclude this production video. I hope you found it helpful. And feel free to comment down below if you have any questions whatsoever. Now, I'm going to be doing some of these production videos um, where I take you guys through my track and give you guys some tips and tricks. Now, let me know if there's anything you want me to do in future videos. And please subscribe to my channel and leave a like down below. See you guys. Peace.